Welcome back. Now that we're done with our demo, let's continue with the presentation. Upsert benefits. I hope it's pretty obvious that Upsert simplifies the insert and update operations dramatically. We no longer need to know about the Salesforce record IDs and we're out of the business of needing to export data from production and match on those records doing the VLOOKUP cross-references. Inherently, this process helps prevent duplicates too because Salesforce is matching on that external ID value. And if it finds a match, then it updates the record rather than insert a duplicate. And by far, this uses fewer API calls because we're not needing to export the data from Salesforce. We've cut that process out completely. And so it's also going to save us time. And we saw that the upset operation can set those lookup fields too in one operation. Awesome. So best practices. Well, the external ID field should be unique. And that's important because when you're doing the upsert operation, if Salesforce finds two or more records with the same value in that external ID field, then it's going to kick them out as errors because it's ambiguous. It doesn't know which one to actually update. So you should mark this value as unique. And as we're talking about uniqueness, sometimes that external ID value from the external system might not be unique enough once you get it into Salesforce. For example, I'd worked with a client that was importing to their Salesforce org patient data from multiple hospital systems. And within each hospital system, the patient identifiers that were being assigned were unique. But it was probable that any two hospital systems might be assigning the same ID to different people. So when we started to bring that data into the client Salesforce, we had collisions on those patient IDs. So to get around that, we needed to make the value that we stored in Salesforce extra unique. And so we did that by using compound value. So we just concatenated an identifier that we had for the hospital system plus that patient ID. And there it was unique, uh, more globally unique within the Salesforce org. Now, as we talk about bringing in data from multiple systems, we're starting to get into a master data management uh, strategy. Let's say you may have customer data split across three different systems, A, B, and C. And what we want to do is get a single picture, one stop shop of that full customer information in Salesforce, our system of engagement. Well, what we need to do is get the governance team in place to go and pretty much create a cross-reference, a master cross-reference of all those identifiers across all those different systems. And then we're going to generate and assign to each of those records a master record ID. This new master record ID is now the unique identifier for that, say, account that might have some of its data spread across three different systems. That master record ID is the value we want to use as a um, the external ID that we would upsert on into Salesforce. Why we don't want to upsert directly from these other fragmented systems is because it's probably unlikely that any two of these systems have the same common identifier between them. And if we only upsert with the identifier that system A or B or C know about, then we're only replicating that fragmented data set into Salesforce, which is what we don't want. Now, just because we don't want to upsert by those uh, system A or system B IDs doesn't mean that we don't want those values in Salesforce. We do. We want to map those into some extra text fields. We just won't use them for the upsert purposes. And bringing those fields into Salesforce gives us some benefits. For example, we can build mashups with Canvas apps. For example, we might iframe in content from our SAP system because we know the SAP system's ID. We can bring that data into Salesforce. Or perhaps the other way around. Because we know those specific system identifiers, we can build deep links into those systems from Salesforce. And it's just something nice to present to your users. It gives more context about that data on the page layouts and the reports. Now, some resources that you can read up on uh, to get deeper insights about all the different topics that we've 
gone over. There's some blog posts, even Salesforce University um, trainings that you might want to dig into, as well as the developer guides. And the last link, Master Data Management Strategy for the Enterprise, that's a prior Dreamforce video uh, that I highly encourage everyone to watch once you start getting into this MDM management scenario that we just talked about. Any questions? Feel free to hit me up at Twitter on Douglas C. Ayers. Um, I also have blog articles on my website, douglascayers.com, that you can comment on if you have any other questions about these scenarios. And uh, make sure to check out some of my code on GitHub. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Bye.